Hi everybody! So I am currently working on the Queen of Diamonds quilt pattern and block of the month. And originally the pattern was written where you would attach these two sashings. So the one that's inner and closest to the diamond and this thicker one by machine. But so many people wanted to do the whole quilt top uh, EPP method that Pink Door Fabrics came out with a lattice paper set so that you can do the entire top by EPP and not have to pull out the machine at all. So I had a couple of questions of how to actually attach these lattice pieces, the inner ones, to fabric, the best way to do that, because some people were still trying to use the instructions. So there are cutting instructions in the back here for cutting out the strips in order to machine sew them. And so people were still using those instructions to cut out their strips to attach the papers to. And you do not need to do that. You will actually use a lot less fabric by not doing that. So I'm going to show today how you can do that without pre-cutting your pieces. So once you receive your lattice paper piecing set, you can purchase this right on Pink Door Fabrics. You will see that it has two different baggies. So this smaller baggie is for the smaller pieces, the small triangles that are along the edges. So we don't need that one quite yet. We're gonna do a big diamond. And then you have this longer, uh, this bag with the longer pieces. So for the big diamond, we wanna pull out these long and narrow that have the ends that look like that we want to pull out so you'll need four I'm actually gonna only use two because I already made some of these up and I did them wrong so I'm gonna remake them but you would need four normally for your diamonds so just pull those out and then I'll give you some tips on getting the fabric on these so we have a completed diamond here you use your books and your papers and everything to complete a whole diamond we have the whole thing here my my nice owl diamond and the biggest part for putting on these sashes so number one i know everybody's saying do this at the end blah 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 but if you're machine sewing them that is totally fine and probably the route you should go but it's gonna go really quick if you wait if we're epp in these edges and you wait until the end number one you're gonna be super bored because these are long straight edges those are not fun to do over and over and over and everyone that's machine sewing is gonna be done way before we are because it's gonna take so long to get these on. So I have been attaching at least the inner sashing to my diamonds as I go. I haven't gotten them all done yet, but I've been trying to do them as I go so that it's not such a long, tedious process at the end. So my suggestion is always lay out your papers around the diamond. So you can see we have the long, sharp point at the top there the more narrow angle at the bottom, and then these get flipped over and go the opposite direction. And I'll pan the camera out so you can see the whole diamond. So the reason you wanna kind of lay them out, and you know, I'm gonna go at a little angle here. The reason you wanna lay these out is because you are actually going to attach um, the fabric to, so it's gonna be shown on this side. So it'll be shown this way. And what happens is you end up with four pieces where two are going the same direction and two are going the other direction. So I can show you four that I have here. So you can see I have two facing this way and two facing this way. Now, if you were to attach the fabric so the, all the angles were going the same way, you would not actually be able to put them around the diamond. So it's really important that you remember that you're gonna have two going one way, two going the other. And then the other hard part of it, well, this is where I screwed up on this particular diamond, is in the uh, a sample, basically you have kind of the same color on two sides. So like these would be in the reds, these would be in the orange to kind of get that color wash across the whole quilt now it's not the end of the world if that doesn't happen but on mine I did not make that happen so when I lay these particular ones out what I and what I did by accident is I have orange uh, diagonal or across from each other where it should be 
like this. So I, ha I accidentally, and then I have purple on the other side. So if I can scan over. So I have them across from each other where these two should be purple and these two should be orange. So obviously I wasn't paying very good attention when I put this together. So this is exactly why you lay these out and leave these here as you're doing your fabrics so that you know exactly what you are trying to achieve and what colors are going where. So what I am going to do is I'm going to make another orange and another purple so that I can have them on the correct sides. And so I will show you how you get these onto the fabrics without pre-cutting your fabric. So we have these papers around my diamond. So like I said, I'd already made up a couple. My bottom two were the wrong color. So I'm gonna redo those and show you how I do that to, to do this. I do these diamond by diamond because I want certain colors around here. You could certainly line up just a bunch of them and do them all at once. I wouldn't do all of them so that if certain colors don't work out, you can make a few up here and there. But honestly, it, it's just as quick to do them diamond by diamond and make sure that you have the colors that you want. So these are going to be the two that I'm going to show you how to attach the paper to. You want it so that the papers face up. So when you're ultimately putting this on the fabric, this is going to end up face down. You're going to flip it over face down so that the right side of the fabric is on the bottom there. Um, you can mark, I don't mark them because I do it diamond by diamond, but you can mark it, put a little X on them or something like that so that you know that's the side that goes face down so that you make sure you get all the proper placement. Now for the fabric. This is the Mick Jaguar fabric. This is the fabric you're using to do these inner sashing. And I have it, so you can see I've already cut some. So obviously some is already cut away. So this is the back side of the fabric. You can see I have the front side there. And you can see down here is my orange. So this is the color I want to get on my next paper. That's this corner paper right here. I want to get that color here. So I glue based, I use my glue basting and I hand cut all my seams. I don't use acrylic templates. I don't think it's worth spending the money on. I am pretty consistent with my seams. All of these were hand cut. So I'm really not worried about it. You know, you just want your seams to be fairly consistent so that sewing it afterwards when you're actually quilting it once all the papers come out, it's easy. But you can see my seams are not always, you know, perfect but it works, it does, it's, you know, EPP back in the day, 1800s, they certainly didn't have acrylic templates and their quilts came out just fine. You do not need them. So take my glue basting. I always glue my papers to the back of my fabric so it doesn't shift around on me. If you thread base, I might still glue my paper to the fabric so it doesn't shift around when you thread based. So either way, but what I do is I just put a couple of dots, just really random there, of glue on this side of the fabric, because this is the side of the paper that I want on the back side of the fabric here. So you want to make sure you're flipping it over so that that side is down. I'm going to place it where my orange is. Actually, I can go this way. Try to get a little bit of the cheetah face in there or the jaguar face, but I just want to make sure I'm in the orange. So then I press it down and now you can see it's not going anywhere. So I don't have to worry about moving my fabric or anything. It's going to stick there. So then I have this side and this one I want to be more purpley pink. So this is going to get pressed down into the purpley pink section of my Mick Jaguar. So we're going to take this and again i put my glue down that kind of tells you if you do that before you take it off the diamond which side is going down and we're going to place that more in the purpley pink now because i want certain colors for this there is a little bit of a gap on my fabric i could take you know what because i'm actually i probably will do this because I know eventually I'm gonna need that color in between, I'm gonna do a third one. This one's not necessarily gonna be used for this diamond, but I'll find a diamond that it'll work on. Just to show you that there really is no waste when you're doing this. There's plenty of room in between these to add another piece. And so I will do that. So we're gonna get three pieces out of this. 
I'm pretty close to my selvage, so I'm probably not going to get one here. You could get closer. I actually could have gone a little more that way, but I wanted the orange and the purple specifically. So you can see I have it far enough from my edge here that I'll get a nice turnover and then plenty of room up here as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. So this is pretty easy peasy. I'm just going to cut out these three. I'm actually going to cut them out as one unit to start and then we'll cut them out individually. So if you can hopefully can see, I'll try to get in here close. I'm leaving enough for my seam allowance. I'm cutting just close enough for my seam allowance and that's it. I'm not cutting any more and I certainly don't want to cut too close. If you accidentally cut too close, if you're only uh, cutting one side, you can move your paper. Just make sure you cut your other side a little bit thicker so that you can have room to move your paper if you absolutely have to. But as long as you eyeball this good. And then I'm going to leave my seam allowance at the tip there. And we're going to go across the top. All right, so this is now loose from my Mick Jaguar, and that is all the fabric I need for three pieces. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna keep going, cutting your seam allowances. So we're gonna cut along this edge to trim this one in. And I do not waste any of my fabric, so I actually am making, I know I'm a little crazy, but I am making quarter inch hexi and maybe making them into a quilt or maybe they'll just be confetti I don't know but I save all my fabric to make quarter inch hexes with so we are just going to keep trimming I just moved that fabric out of the way so I'm going to go right down the middle of these this gives me enough seam allowance on each side to be able to fold these over and again I do this all by hand I don't use the templates if you want to use the templates, you absolutely can. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit more precise in those seam allowance. But you, if you are EPP in the entire top, you don't have to worry about the seam allowance as much. If you were machine sewing, you would want to worry about the seam allowance because you want this edge to be the exact 3 8 inch so that when you're sewing, all of it is precise. But if you're EPP and everything, the seam allowance really doesn't matter that much except for the fact of hand quilting it later. You don't want your seam allowances too thick for that reason. So now we're gonna cut our corners. We're cutting corners. So again, just leave that seam allowance. And that's it. So now you have this all cut out to the shape. And yes, I do keep the little piece. This one's too little. This one wouldn't fit a quarter inch hexi, but this one would. So I do keep all my teeny tiny scraps. So all three of these, we're gonna cut out our seam allowance. If you feel like your seam allowance is a little thick, you can certainly trim it down. I feel like this top one might be a little bit thick. So we're just gonna trim that down a little bit you know this is not like I said it's not an exact science if you are EPP in the whole top it's really and truly not that big a deal I think people get in their own head about precision which when you're machine sewing it does have to be precise or your blocks aren't going to line up but when you're doing EPP it's not like that because the papers make sure that everything lines up so as long as the papers are precise then everything else will be precise and that's what matters. And so I think people that come from a machine sewing world really get in their own head about the seams being exact and this, that, and the other thing. And it really doesn't matter. The most important thing is that your papers are exact. As long as your papers are exact, everything else will work out. Okay, so we have all three of these trimmed. So you can see all the edges are trimmed and everything. So now, we are going to go ahead and wrap the paper around. So I'll show you how I do that. So let's start with the first one. Now, one quirky thing that I learned when glue basting these long ones, if I put glue down this whole way, by the time I get to this end, the glue is essentially dried and really doesn't stick well. So what I have been doing, a little tip here, 
is I put down probably about a quarter of the way the glue then you wrap your paper around and then you just put down a little bit more I like to put it right on the paper itself you do want to wrap these tight but you don't want to wrap it so tight that your needle can't get through because the goal of your needle is to be able to not pierce the paper and I always put a little on the fabric at the end so that that end sticks down real good and do that down here so that's nice and attached okay so you want all you need is one needle's thread of this okay so you want it tight but you don't want it like so tight that your needle's not going to go through so you want to be careful about that you'll get the feel of it the more you do this if your needle doesn't go through on one then you just do it slightly looser when you're doing the next round so again i go about a quarter of the way wrap this with my fingers and i do try to get it on the fabric here so that all of these tails lay flat and again on the fabric itself and then the rest of the paper okay so now we have these sides turned over now you can see this seam is obviously a lot thicker than this seam again not a huge deal i wouldn't unwrap it to fix that and epp all that matters is that the paper is the right shape so now we're going to do our ends i like to do the long pieces first and then the ends i feel like when you're putting these you're sewing these together that makes your tails go away from each other so you can see here because of the way i do that and it works out really well so that's what i do is i do the long edges and then fold in the ends so for this end it's just a little end you're just going to put your glue down and you just kind of fold it over and it is a kind of thick fabric so really feel it with your fi your finger make sure that you're getting a nice sharp end because sometimes when you when you're folding here it might get away from you and you can see like a little curve if you see that undo it and try it again you want this really nice and straight so that when you sew it it sews in correctly so again we're gonna put and you can see where i put my glue down it's that bright yellow and then we're gonna make sure and i tend to do my corners first actually because that's usually where you get that little wave so i do my corners and then fold in the middle and that's it and now you have a nice sharp corner there this one got a little, a little see so if you have that see it's a little bunchy there i don't know if you can see that it's a little bunchy not a big deal because that's just on the tail so i just want to make sure so that's fine okay and that's it so i will now do the other two and show you how they go on the diamond Okay, so I have all three of those wrapped in fabric now, and the goal was to get a purple on this side because I had mismatched those, and an orange on this side. So let's see how we did. So this was my more purpley strip, and yeah, it fits perfectly there. And then this was my more orangey strip, and it fits perfectly. So now I have the four pieces I need, and one extra that I don't have to do later if I need a more pinky one and that's it so now i am ready to attach these i do have another video that i made showing how to attach these and ease them in 
Hopefully this helped you show how to put these fabrics on really quickly and simply without having to cut all those strips. You certainly could do the strip method. I'm not sure. Um, I think overall you are going to save fabric by doing it this way and not cutting the strips because when I, I actually did cut a few strips before the kit was out for EPP. And when I was using those, there was quite a bit of waste. I would actually get probably about this much cut off of each strip when I was putting these on. So there is a bit of waste uh, when you are doing the strips. So I think doing this method will save you a lot of fabric and hopefully you'll have some of that beautiful Mick Jaguar left over for another project. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. I am happy to make other tutorials uh, with just EPP in general or more things specific to Queen of Diamonds. If anybody does have any questions, I'm always happy to do what I can to make a video. It's a lot of fun for me. I've only done a couple of them, but hopefully they're useful to you and I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks everybody.